In a Wall Street Journal op-ed, former World Bank President David Malpass says that the U.S. credit downgrade from ratings agency Fitch amounts to a wake-up call to the Federal Reserve. He writes, the essence of the downgrade is, quote, we are experiencing a slow-motion fiscal train wreck, not a soft landing, and it's draining global capital and endangering the dollar. David Malpass joins us this morning. David, great to have you with us. Good to be with you, Melissa. Hi. Hi, Hi there. Um, a lot Hi there. Of, a lot of people want to write off uh, the Fitch downgrade, saying that basically they're just matching S&P back in 2011. So in your view, what has become more urgent now? Uh, the the uh, growth in the economy is the key question. You've got all this debt that the government took on. Quite a bit of it is short, ra short rate because the Fed was buying back the long rate. So when you look at who's exposed in this rising rate environment, it's unusually uh, it's, uh, biased toward the U.S. government and the taxpayer being uh, exposed. That's the same in Japan and in Europe. So there's, I think, more, sh more shoes to drop in terms of asset repricing. And of course, global growth is too weak for developing countries. When you say asset repricing, what specifically are you pointing to? Uh, everywhere you look, you've got you, so in today's Wall Street Journal on the front page is the idea of apartment buildings, multifamily. I think Andrew was just in the last segment talking about uh, the, the, the as as uh, mortgages come up, uh, there has to be a repricing. In the UK, people have floating rate mortgages, uh, adjustable rate that that uh, have to be that once they expire, you have to take out the new debt at a new price. That hasn't even started in Japan yet. So more shoes to drop uh, as people reprice. And, of course, the U.S. government uh, is one of the big debtors uh, within this process. So that was the point of the uh, Wall Street Journal article. Right. So repricing mainly because of just the, the rise in rates that we would theoretically see. But there are a lot of other factors in play as well. There are technical factors like uh, the Treasury refunding. Um, which is, you know, working its way through the markets now. It's what the Bank of Japan is doing that's making, you know, Japanese investors maybe think twice about investing in U.S. assets. I mean, how, how do you think about separating these factors from the Fitch impact? Markets are really good at arbitrage, so they look ahead. So I think they'll be able to handle the refunding. You know, that was a, a mountain out of a molehill. When the debt limit went up, people said, well, there were going to be too many T-bills issued. The market's good at absorbing that. I'm more worried about the, uh, the, the misallocation of capital. You, you had 10 years of interest rates uh, artificially low and bond yields low. So that means a lot of things that were bought during that period of time were mispriced. People were buying at the top of the market uh, because they could make the monthly payments. But now if the monthly payments go up, they wish they hadn't, so, they hadn't bought, uh, spent so much. That includes companies. If you were issuing bonds and buying back your equity, that worked uh, until you find out that you don't have a revenue stream or an income stream to support that uh, debt. David, the, the, the administration obviously uh, criticized the, the Fitch decision in large part, said uh, that if they were going if, if to downgrade, should have done so when the debt ceiling was on the table, maybe should have done so uh, two, three years ago, maybe even four years ago uh, during the Trump administration, when if you looked at their model in that chart, it looked like it was actually at its lowest point. It looks like it's coming back. Do you have any question about the timing of it now? I'm not so focused on the bond rating agencies. CBO put out their long-term forecast. And so I think the really uh, the important point is what's the deficit going to be this year, next year, and the following, and over the next 10 years. The government hasn't really prepared for the funding needed for the aging society uh, and also for the military. You know, the, we, we banked year after year, decade, uh, well, many years, the peace dividend. That means underfunding of the ammunition and so on. And now trying to fight a, a very long-term war in Ukraine, it's, uh, it's using up the resources that are there. So I'm, I'm more focused on uh, the need for much faster growth uh, and stronger, stronger external uh, 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 profile of the United States in a world that's very chaotic. David, I'm curious, in terms of your view of, of, of repricing of assets that needed, needs to take place still, um, did you have that view at the beginning of the year? Because some would argue that a lot of those factors were already in place. So is the Fitch downgrade just sort of adding 
to that scenario or is it an actual catalyst? I don't I think it's it was already there. Uh, and if you think about it, uh, it was, it's very odd that the U.S. government wasn't issuing long and, uh, uh, in fact, the opposite of what was done. We, we had the odd situation of issuing long and then having the Fed buy back the long. You should have been issuing uh, long in net terms, meaning uh, the, going the opposite way from what we did. And so that leaves the government exposed. And maybe the Fitch, Fitch is just uh, signaling that. Uh, and, and catching up with the reality that it, the U.S. government is overexposed, but it's also Japan and Europe. Look at the carry trade that's coming from Japan. They still have their, their, their two. Uh, Andrew's been talking about the short term uh, rates. Right. They're negative in Japan. So that has to catch up to some kind of global arbitrage. Switzerland's currency is getting stronger, and I'm worried about the dollar uh, because of all the fiscal uh, burden that's still left on the, on the U.S. and the world.